Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. This time I want to talk to you about a dreams technique that I call inside out sculpting. Inside out sculpting is when you take advantage of the way dreams rendering works to gain detail in a sculpt that you don't actually add. Okay, Lucid, that sounds confusing and strange. Tell me more. Sure thing. When you sculpt into a sculpt, you can lay adjacent edits down next to each other. Though they appear to be more or less continuous, these edits retain their individual borders at most sculpture detail levels. At some sculpture detail levels, the borders seem to disappear. At others, they become more pronounced. The sweet spot is about 7 or 8 sculpture detail reductions below standard detail. The basic idea is that you can gain free detail while lowering the cost of your sculpt. In essence, this means that this technique actually has a negative cost. That sounds great, but there are some limitations. Number one, the detail does not necessarily extend to every surface on the object. You can see on the back of this set of cubes the detail has gone completely while we've gained some nice detail on the front. The second thing is that these gaps generally present themselves at lower sculpture details, so this technique is less useful if you're trying to make something that's super tight. Due to the nature of the way this works, it is generally better with groups of edits that tile nicely. You'll notice I started with cubes, I'm moving on to triangles, and eventually I'll finish with hexagons. In all three cases, the borders between these edits are even and clear cut. Other combinations of shapes present interesting differences this way, but the tiling shapes are the most pronounced. This concept pairs nicely with the idea of building detail from edits inside your sculpt rather than with groups of sculpture because, as I mentioned, the detail is gained at what is essentially negative graphics thermal cost. The reason that's especially appealing is because building detail with edits rather than sculpts is a strategy which trades graphics thermal for gains in gameplay thermal. In this instance, you actually get the graphics thermal trade-off back in cases where you can effectively apply the technique. I'll show you what I mean with a brick wall sculpture I made in a minute. One other nice feature of this technique is that if you do want to add more detail with more edits, the exposed gaps between edits present a clear-cut guide for opening up those spaces. That way you can make those gaps more pronounced without having to guess where they are or without having to use the grid. This results in a more natural looking set of edits. You can also play with the varying levels of sculpture detail to see what features appear. At very loose levels, all sorts of interesting things can happen. This is the brick wall I was talking about earlier. Each of these bricks is an edit inside the sculpt. There are a total of 120. This is a sculpt of a single brick. If we attempt to make a similar structure with sculpts instead of edits, we will need to use 120 of those sculpts, and that has a definitive impact on gameplay thermo. The wall full of edits will be more expensive from a graphics standpoint, but we'll see in a second why that's an acceptable trade-off. What I'm going to do here is clone the wall made of 120 sculpts as many times as the gameplay thermo will, will allow. Remember that the maximum amount of sculpts under the gameplay thermo is about 10,000. A little quick math, you'd be able to manage about 80 wall sections. That's a pretty big wall, but the issue with this approach is that it doesn't leave you as much room for adding other things to your scene. I end up with 70 wall sections at a cost of 82% gameplay thermo. I'm going to leave all those sections in the scene and see how many copies I can make of the wall built inside out using 120 edits to add the brick detail inside the sculpt and then sculpture detail reduction to bring out the gaps. The thing to bear in mind here is that I'm giving myself less than one quarter of the thermo that the 70 walls made from brick sculpts are consuming. The end result is that I'm able to add 1200, that's 1200 copies of the inside out wall, and I still have room left over. The 1200 copies only consume 11% of the gameplay thermo. Let's take it a step further and get rid of all of the sculpt bricks. We'll then see how many copies of the inside out wall we can make with maximum headroom. We've erased those and gameplay thermo is down to only 12% with that enormous chunk of 1200 wall sections still in the scene. By the way, those 1200 sections would represent a wall about 8 feet high 
and almost three miles long. Utilizing the maximum power of dreams, we copy the wall sections until we end up at the gameplay thermal limit, having made 10,200. Again, this is a wall about 8 feet high based on the standard puppet. Detail at this scale is good. 10,200 sections would be about 25 miles of wall. Let me repeat that, 25 miles. Graphics thermal cost is 3%. Just to illustrate and reiterate, here we are inside of the wall sculpt. You can see me highlight each one of those edits that represent the individual bricks. I've also turned down sculpture detail several ticks in order to gain free detail between those edits. I have additional edits in there for more detail in some gaps, and of course I've spent some time spray painting it to add even more detail. So try it out! Save some gameplay thermal and let your scenes grow exponentially in size. More tips and techniques coming soon. I'll see you next time.